There's a huge problem, and it's starting to affect AMD GPUs now. Intel's next-gen GPU gets benchmarked, and both AMD and Intel's next-gen CPUs are finally on the way. Plus, next-gen Ryzen is called what? Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, there's a problem, and it's getting bigger every day. Let's just say if you bought a gaming GPU recently with a 12V 2x6 connector, regardless of the power draw, you really might want to check your power cable. Like, pause the video and go look. It could save your GPU's life. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too, because unlike these connectors, Gamer Meld won't melt under pressure. Either way, you want to check your connector because I now have five new cases of burn connectors with one being a 9070 XT. That's right, lower power draw doesn't always mean you're safer, because this is actually the second 9070 XT from a completely different manufacturer. First, it was an ASRock 9070 XT Tai Chi OC, and now it's a Sapphire Nitro, meaning there wasn't some defect in that particular card. It all points back to the new 16-pin connector. As you can see here, this is the blue-tipped connector from Sapphire, with the strict goal of ensuring you keep it plugged all the way in. And yet, here we are. You can see that it melted multiple pins here. Now, don't get me wrong. There are always some failures for any product. It's why warranties exist. But when it keeps happening in the same way with the same failed part, you know you have a problem. And don't forget that not everyone posts their issues online. In fact, most people likely just call the manufacturer. So we have no clue how many actual failures there are it could be magnitudes more than what we're seeing here. And speaking of that, we have four new RTX 5090s that have reportedly melted as well. You can see right down here, four new RTX 5090 owners have reported burned power connectors across Reddit. One PNY RTX 5090 user described weeks of black screens and crashes before reseeding the card and finding the 12-pin plug charred along one row of pins. Another report from an MSI RTX 5090 Ventus 3X owner mentioned months of random freezes and flickering, which ended with a complete no signal crash and a melted connector. Not only that, but a third case on MSI Gaming involved an MSI Ventus 5090 paired with a Corsair 1200 watt PSU using the 4212 VHPWR adapter, even with under volting to around 450 watts and mostly moderate gaming loads, the adapter burned leaving visible heat marks on one GPU pin. Then the latest report comes from another RTX 5090 owner who found a melted plug after six months of careful use and regular cable checks. So yeah, this is not good. And you might be thinking with all of these that the yellow tipped MSI connectors are overrepresented here, but it could just be that the color allows the marks to be easily seen. Plus it isn't just those, there is another one right here. At the end of the day, the 12V 2x6 connector connectors are a joke. Some of the problem did seem to be improper insertions early on, but the simple fact is that the rated power allowed to go through the cable is extremely close to the max possible capacity, while the 8-pin connector is nowhere near it. That means the margin of error allowed is far lower. Combine that with the lax standards of the connector and you have a terrible product. Next up for today, we're starting to get benchmarks on Intel's newest XE3 architecture. Remember that this one is only made for next-gen iGPUs, with their performance XE3P set to go in their next-gen desktop cards. But this obviously gives us a nice idea of what kind of performance we can expect here. In fact, I would assume that the XE3P architecture is even faster. Either way, as you can see right down here, these benchmarks were done by the Laptop Review Club where you can see it's a site that includes Golden Pick, Upgrade as an author, a well-known hardware reviewer, and leaker. And according to them, we are actually getting some 3D Mark Time Spy scores here, and yeah, it's really impressive. You can see 3D Mark Time Spy graphics scores shared by Laptop Review Club may provide more insight. 
According to them, the Core Ultra X9 388H, the flagship Panther Lake SKU with 12 XE3 cores, scores 6,233 points with LPDDR5X8533 memory and around 6,300 points when paired with faster 9,600 megatransfers per second memory of the same type. Now, we unfortunately don't have TDP information about this, but you can see that comparing it to the Lunar Lake 258V, it completely crushes it. And in fact, when comparing it to AMD's Ryzen 9 HX370, we are looking at around 70% faster. So that very much is impressive. Now, obviously it doesn't compete with the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. That's just because that is a monster APU made for a completely different segment and it comes with 40 CUs. Now I do want to point out that we're looking at eight XE2 cores versus 12. So that does very much at least show some of the reason why we're looking at a difference here. But the question is, is there some reason within the architecture that they're able to add quite a bit more XE cores versus previous gen, which would mean that they're able to do it yet again with the discrete cards. So it doesn't mean we won't see just as much of a performance increase with their discrete cards, but it might not be as impressive. Though, don't forget, once again, when we're comparing pure architecture to architecture, it would be assumed that the XE3P performance is set to be better than regular XE3. Still, I do want to point out that they also mentioned that while, yes, it completely crushed the HX370 iGPU, time spy tends to favor Intel iGPUs, so the increase likely won't be that high, but it'll definitely still beat it by quite a bit. And lastly for today, it has begun. Both AMD and Intel's next-gen CPUs are finally on the way. Plus, the naming scheme for Ryzen 10,000, if that's what it's called, has leaked. So, starting things off, the popular monitoring tool for Windows, HWBot, just released a new version that, as you can see here, includes support for Nova Lake S, which is the codename for Intel's next-generation desktop CPUs. And it also adds support for next generation AMD platforms. And that likely means their next gen 900 series motherboards set to launch with Zen 6. And of course, we've seen leaks like this from popular software in the past. They have to get information early so they can start adding support before the release. But basically, this means that both AMD and Intel are moving along nicely for their upcoming products. And with that, I thought I'd go over the lead specs so far, starting with Intel's Nova Lake. As you can see, they come with up to an unreal 52 cores with the Core Ultra 9. And that breaks down into 16P cores, 32E cores, and four, these are new LPE cores. And we're looking at 150 watt TDP, but as always with Intel, that means absolutely nothing. Regardless, this really is impressive, TDP being much higher likely or not. Then we move down to Core Ultra 7, this one 14P cores, 24E cores, and four LPE cores, also 150 watts, though actually keep in mind all of these are four LPE cores, so I'm not gonna go over that every single time. Moving on to Core Ultra 5, we're looking at eight performance cores, 16E cores, 125 watts, then another Core Ultra 5 SKU, eight performance cores, 12 efficiency cores, 125 watts, Core Ultra 5, another SKU, six performance cores, eight efficiency cores, and once again, 125 watts. Finally, with Core Ultra 3, all of these are 65 watts, and four performance cores, eight efficiency cores, then of course, once again, four LPE cores, then finally, four performance cores, and four efficiency cores, and then four LPE cores. So yeah, Intel's next generation Nova Lake S is definitely set to be a massive jump in performance. And finally, we have AMD's next gen Ryzen. And here you can also see that the naming scheme has also leaked. This originally comes from a video by Red Gaming Tech and it's actually about a month old at this point. I have no clue how I let this one slip by me, but regardless, if this is right, AMD is apparently adding a 
I to the name, which of course means they plan to include an NPU with the chips. Now, I haven't heard this from other leakers, so take it with a grain of salt, but I really wouldn't be surprised. Either way, if that's the case, I personally think it's a waste of space on the chip itself, but at the same time, I really just hate the name. According to this, we'd likely have something like Ryzen AI 9 10,950X. Not really sure exactly how this one will work, but regardless, it's terrible. But names aside, the specs would also include for the highest end model up to 24 cores, 96 megabytes of L3 cache, 24 megabytes of L2 cache. Then there's apparently also, according to this, a 16 core Ryzen 9 processor, 96 megabytes of L3 cache yet again, but just 16 megabytes of L2 cache. Then the Ryzen AI 7 10,700X, who knows? This one is 12 cores, 48 megabytes of L3 cache, and 12 megabytes of L2 cache. Then moving down to the Ryzen AI 5 chip, we're looking at eight cores with 48 megabytes of L3 cache and eight megabytes of L2 cache. All in all, like I said, really hate the naming scheme, but the chips themselves are looking incredibly impressive. And don't forget that they're also leaked to get around seven gigahertz, which would of course be insane. Insane. Basically, next-gen CPUs are set to be a massive upgrade over current-gen from both Intel and AMD. Who ends up having the fastest products is anyone's guess. So while that does it for today, who do you think will win between next-gen Intel or AMD? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.